So hey everybody, I have just walked from home and I've got to Annerley Station. Now I'm heading to Charing Cross, which is in central London. And what am I going there for? Why am I dressed up in black tie of all things? Well, we're going to the inaugural Cycling Weekly Awards. Now, this is something which has been a long, long time in the making, so everybody is super excited. I mean, I've got a fresh cut as well, so that shows how excited I was, so see you there. Okay, so we're now at the welcoming drinks at the Cycling Weekly Awards. This is our first awards and the first of many. This is presented to you by Garmin and I have a special guest with us tonight, Rebecca Charlton. What is your role here tonight? So Tell I us. am backstage reporting and I couldn't be more excited because there are so many stars in attendance. It's going to be absolutely brilliant. We've got Sir Bradley Wiggins here, Sir Chris Hoy, Chris Boardman and actually many more as well. And yeah. I actually can't wait to go and catch them all. I mean, that's a hell of a star-studded field, that. I mean, I'm hopefully going to catch a few words with Simon Richardson, our editor, very soon, who's going to give you a bit of a background on what we can look forward to tonight. So tell us, what, is, what do these awards mean to you and to the brand as a whole? Uh, it means me making a speech tonight. Which, it must uh, be quite daunting getting stuff. Getting a nervous about yeah, in front of 300 people, but it should be fun. Um, what does it mean? It's just, uh, it's a big night for us to do. I've been working here for years now. We've never done anything like this. I don't think we've had the, yeah. the guts to do it. So um, How many years have you been working here for? 17 and a bit. <clears throat> so you're practically part of the furniture. I am, yeah, I am. Furniture man. I am, I am. Um, so yeah, it, it's but it's quite it's quite a big do, and there's some big mm. names out there. Um, but the good news is everyone got got behind it. We thought people may or may not be interested, but you know we sold out the sponsorship within within a few weeks. Everyone just was lapping up really. So it seemed to uh, seemed to have found something that there was a bit of a bit of a desire for in the market. So yes. hopefully, fingers crossed, be the first to many. Hopefully, hopefully, and hopefully, hopefully yeah. it'll all go well, and I won't mess up my speech. So obviously, we've got some pretty big name stars yeah. out here. Yeah. I'm not the main man. You're not the main man. I'm not the main man. No, no, no. There are some bigger names here than, than Simon okay. I know Chris Borden's on his way. He's already texted me to say he forgot his dicky boat. Yep, so we've had to find him a tie to put on. Don't, <laughs> don't tell anyone. Uh, Chris Hoy, I'll be interviewing him on stage. Bradley Wiggins is here, so two nights in the realm. Really looking forward to meeting Brian Robinson. But it's not just about the athletes, is it? I mean, I've he I hear we've got no. some uh, some charity workers, people yep. who've done a lot for, for the sport and yep. outside sport. Yeah, it's really tell important. About them. Well, it's important for the mag to recognise the, the, the people behind the scene, the people who make cycling happen on a local basis of week in, week out. What are your early memories of the MAG? Um, just w wait until Thursday to be able to get up to WH Smith at Kilburn High Road and, and, and pick it up and obviously it was the only outlet at the time. We didn't have the internet, we didn't have uh, Instagram, Twitter, 24-hour uh, news feed. So cycling weekly was where it was at so and I used to cut the magazine up stick the pictures on my wall so yeah I've got a lot of lot of nostalgia for cycling weekly cycling now every event is a big deal and I think obviously we see tonight this uh, this is the inaugural one it's the first one but the institution that cycling weekly is obviously has brought the crowd it has so it's, it's, it's actually nice to be here and be part of it and be invited to it and without it being about myself or anything and just it's about the people that have succeeded in this sport which they're celebrating tonight Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the 2018 Cycling Weekly Awards Association of Guards. The main thing for me is to bring publicity to the Great North Air, Great North Air Ambulance that, um, I mean, essentially, they saved my life. Um, I wouldn't be here without them. Now, this is one I totally understand if you don't want to delve into an answer, but could you tell people that are watching this a little bit about why you needed the air ambulance that day? Yeah, I mean, that day I was just out, I'd had a race the day before and I was out on a bike ride, a uh, sort of recovery ride that everybody sort of does after a race. Um, and I was just out minding my own business and I was hit by a stolen car at 50 mile an hour. Um, I hit the car, I hit the floor and I hit my head a couple of times pretty hard. And 
as a paramedic, and I can say it was more than that we're able to deal with. At that moment in time, we needed a doctor to sedate me at that time, and that's what these guys were able to do. It's crazy that these guys are charity funded, but they are. That's how it works. So we need to fund them because, as I found out, at any minute, any day that you know life can change like that in a split second, and um, we could need these, need these guys. I had sort of interventions that can only be provided by the sort of doctor paramedic team that came to me in the Great North Air Ambulance and it just shows how vital the funding is that goes towards these guys. It's been a long road but I'm here and a year to the day I rode um, coast to coast with a big group of cyclists raising over £7,000 for the air ambulance. Um, yeah, and it's a, a road that's been worth it, yeah. Just, we're over the moon. Um, it means so much, not just for us, but for the volunteers and all the members of the club. Um, the excitement when we heard that we were nominated was just been buzzing. So it, I just, it, I can't really express what it this means, means. It means everything to us. Yeah. It really does. It's a huge honour to win the inaugural mm. Cycling Weekly Club of the Year. It's just amazing. We've had a, a cycle club in some form since 1890 um, and it's, it's changed guys over the years so the longevity of it the tradition the history the fact that means that we've had we, well, we've got old school cycling but evolved cycling we do cyclocross and we do mountain biking and and and, and we've got lots of kids involved and we've got a 35 percent female membership and and it's just it's evolved out of all recognition so it's it's yeah, brilliant the, the ability to change i think yeah. that's what's that's what yeah. sets us apart Tell us firstly where it all started for Ethan. Uh, Hernhill Velodrome, which is 10 minutes from our house. So um, we just happen to be fortunately living next to one of the best cycling facilities in the country. And how much did that support and that network at Hernhill and the local cycling community mean to you as a family? Uh, well, initially I had no idea about cycling. I'd never been part of any cycling fraternity, didn't cycle when I was young. So... Uh, we were starting from completely ground zero uh, and at Herne Hill there are coaches, other parents, volunteers who were able to really help us get everything sorted from bikes to training to racing to getting to races. This time last year, the end of 2017, he was on the academy doing his first World Cup in Manchester. Two months later he was on the podium um, camp. A week, Two weeks after that he was in Holland racing and winning the Rainbow Stripes, which is ridiculous, I thought, but he did it. Uh, he's always taken things in his stride, and each time I thought, that's a big step up, Ethan, I think you'll struggle. He doesn't. He, he, he absorbs the challenge, he responds to it, and he seems to perform brilliantly. What will this award mean to him? I think for him, it's, it's um, you know, he's always moving. It's another race, another camp, another training session. This is a little opportunity to step back and take stock and think, wow, I really have achieve something this year I can and look back and you know 2018 was a, a big breakthrough year for him and this is fantastic recognition for that. What did it mean to win the award tonight? Yeah fantastic I was thinking at the table um, you know Cycling Weekly it's one of the biggest magazines cycling wise in the UK and I think everyone aspires to have, you know, their first Cycling Weekly uh, little article. I've, I've spoken with my coach in the past and he says that they used to have competitions, you know, trying to get on the front page of the mag. So, uh, yeah, to, to get an award by the guys tonight, it's, uh, yeah, it's great. Like standing here now when you're looking back at what you've achieved over the summer, what really stands out? What moments in your head? Uh, obviously winning the Nationals, that's a, a massive uh, day that changed quite a lot of things. And then stagiaring for Dimension Data, doing some races for them guys and racing and being teammates with Bernie Eisel, for example, guys that I look up to in the cycling world. That was fantastic. And then, you know, finishing off the season at the World Championships, racing for GB, which is the first time I ever represented my country. Uh, finish on quite a high and, um, yeah, that's just made me hungrier for more. did her and John first get started in cycling? Well, um, Katie and I, we cycled up Mont Vong too when she was 14. 
You should never forgive you for it. <laughs> 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 no, it's, it's one of those gringo moments, you know, like Dad says, oh, look, I've heard of this mountain that people go up. And I was absolutely amazed that she actually came with me. Yeah. That was what struck me about it all, was that she, she didn't just like the sport, she, she embraced the kind of danger and the, and the ducking and the diving and things. And we did the grass track cycling and we, we did a bit of this. And we, she did cyclocross, she did mountain biking. She, she did all, she loved cycling first and foremost. And the fact that she became good at it, I think is, a, is, is almost a bonus. <laughs> I first read about cycling from Land's End to John O'Groats as an enthusiast and the previous record holder, Gethin Butler, was certainly a hero of mine. I didn't ever necessarily realise that I would be the person to challenge his crown. Um, but as time went on and I got older and my time got more limited, I found that I just ended up doing longer and longer races. And then in recent years I found that I was pretty good at 24-hour racing. And then once you kind of find yourself doing 24-hour races pretty successfully, people just suggest to you that maybe the end-to-end's the next step. Uh, it took a while to build up the confidence to take it on, but when I did, um, I was lucky enough to be able to call upon family and friends to produce the best support team possible, and with their help, it kind of all went to plan, so that was good. How important do you think it is for a magazine like Cycling Weekly to come together and recognise everybody in the sport, not, not just the, the World Tour riders, but the volunteers and everyone that's made a difference? Yeah, I think it's really important. I think um, Cycling Weekly is kind of uniquely placed in terms of being able to reach out to all of those different communities. Thank you to everybody for their support uh, this evening. It's my great pleasure to tell you that the bar is now open. Thank you very much for you. Give us a round of applause. Now, it's taken me a little bit longer than normal this morning to get out of bed, and that is down to the fact that I've got a bit of a heavy head, and we were celebrating everything which is great about our sport into the early hours of the morning. And I mean, we had some of the biggest road and track stars there last night. Sir Bradley Wiggins, Sir Chris Hoy, Danny Rowe, and Chris Boardman. But it wasn't just these people that we were celebrating. We were celebrating the best clubs and the most inspirational people of 2018. Right, so you might be wondering why on earth I'm dressed in cycling kit right now. Well, we've just celebrated everything which is great about cycling. So I thought how better to get rid of a bit of a heavy head than to go out for a bike ride. Now, I've popped a couple of Nurofen. I've had a coffee and I'm raring to go. I've actually got some really cool products to test today. I've got a new set of night wheels, which if you've been watching my TT videos, you'll have seen on my TT bike there. So I'm gonna go out and give them a thorough test and hopefully by the time I get back, I'll feel that a little bit better. So if you enjoyed this vlog, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And we don't have a video going out next week. It's Christmas Eve. So everybody, please have an amazing Christmas. Enjoy the festivities, eat lots, and I'll see you all just before New Year. Have a good one. So I'm gonna get Michelle, our lovely editor, to video me. All right. It's part of it, it looks this. It's not gonna happen. Yes. Okay, fine.